U.S. President Donald Trump has announced a pardon for his former national security advisor who admitted lying to the FBI over his contacts with Russia. In a tweet, Trump said Michael Flynn has been granted a full pardon. Flynn's secret contacts with the Russian ambassador to Washington were a key part of a probe into Russia's alleged meddling in the 2016 U.S. presidential election. Flynn pleaded guilty in 2017 to misleading the FBI about those contacts. He was fired by Trump less than a month into his administration. In May this year, the Justice Department withdrew its case against Flynn. It said his alleged fabrications to the FBI were not significant. Tim Anderson is the director at the Center for Counter Hegemonic Studies and joins us now. Tim, it's always good to see you. What do you make of, um, firstly, with uh, regarding General Flynn, it was widely anticipated, but back uh, three years ago, Trump said, I had to fire General Flynn because he lied to the vice president and the FBI. Is his pardon warranted, in your opinion? It's clearly let's remember that the charges against General Flynn were procedural. They were to do with, you know, the protocols of him talking to his Russian Trump was sworn in, and then he's alleged to have lied to the FBI. So that was the basis on which they prosecuted him. So he was, <clears throat> but as a loyalist to Trump, uh, certainly Trump is supporting him. I think we should not forget, though, that Flynn played a, a very important role in intelligence under Obama, effectively uh, not initially, but later on exposing the support that the U.S. had for uh, sectarian terrorists in, in Syria. Do you anticipate, Tim, many more of these uh, pardons from Trump towards his, as you, you refer to them, loyalists? Yes, I think that uh, the, it's the time when a lot of presidents, and most of them have done it, frankly, um, um, reward or, or get out of trouble some of the, the people who have been on their side. So I think <clears throat> that's not unusual. But as I said, Flynn is an important figure because it was his agency, the DIA, that pointed out that the Obama administration in 2012 knew that the extremists were in control of the insurgency in Syria and that the US wanted a, uh, a Salafi caliphate in the eastern part of Syria. So that uh, exposure, which he later confirmed, is, I think, a, a more important uh, uh, memory of the role of Flynn in the in the ventures of the U.S. into the Middle East. Right. And uh, Tim, what uh, would Trump, in your opinion, uh, himself personally gain from any further pardons? No, I just think keeping the loyalty of some of those who supported him, I, I expect to see some more of that. We don't know whether Trump is going to engage in any more adventures. Um, he did carry out some big changes in defence just recently, um, and then it's followed by only a partial withdrawal of troops from Iraq and Syria. Uh, it remains to be seen whether there's anything more actively that can be done. It's possible because Trump is a person with... Um, who looks for vengeance and he still has what um, uh, another two months still in the White House. It's just interesting some of the things you mentioned about Flynn. Do you want to expand just a bit further on that? Sure. Well, Flynn was director of the, the Defense Intelligence Agency, the DIA, um, in 2012, I believe in August 2012, when that leaked memo came out that the US and their allies precisely wanted a, what they call a Salafi caliphate in the eastern part of Syria precisely to weaken the Damascus regime. In other words, they supported ISIS in Syria. And they also knew that the insurgency was, that is to say, the armed rebellion, not the you know, opposition or whatever they called them, the moderates or whatever. The armed insurgency was led by Al-Qaeda, the Muslim Brotherhood and the Salafis and what became known as ISIS. So they knew all that from the beginning. So all of the double speak about them going to fight ISIS and uh, supporting the moderate rebels and all those sorts of things. Flynn played a very important role in, or his agency played an important role in exposing that. And later on, he came out and confirmed that that really it was part of the policy of the Obama administration to use those sectarian terrorists to weaken, uh, well, in the one, on the one hand, Damascus, on the other hand, Baghdad. So it was a tool that was used against um, 
the development of stable independent states in that part of the world. Right. So despite firing him, the two did uh, see eye to eye on, on that and perhaps many other issues as well. That's right. Remember, in 2016, Trump was uh, had this line of withdrawing from losing wars. Perhaps it was a pragmatic sort of role because he had this his own angst about Iran for his own reasons. But nevertheless, he saw a pragmatic benefit in withdrawing from wars that were obviously lost. Now, the deep state clearly talked Trump out of that to a very large degree. Okay, Tim, thank you very much indeed, uh, Mr. Anderson. Tim Anderson, the director at the Center for Counter Hegemonic Studies, joining us from Sydney.